OK, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon to my lone audience, uh, Trisha. So I'm looking at the uh, timetable for the course, and I think we only have uh, how many? Uh, we only have one meeting left after this one. That's going to be on Friday. And uh, we, all, we are almost done, actually, thanks to the video recording I made about uh, or the recordings I made for the well-ordering principles, Soren's Lemma, and Action of Choice. So hopefully you already uh, watched uh, those videos. But don't worry, though. Um, your discussion at today will not really depend on those three. I thought they would be uh, extensively used in our discussion of Pianos Action, but apparently it will not. Because basic pianos action lang yung gagawin natin. And then we only have uh, two requirements uh, remaining to be submitted for the class. Uh, you need to submit the last problem set, uh, problem set number four. And I will give it to you on Friday, December 17th. Uh, and then the deadline for submission is December 21st. So uh, this will cover... Um, Sambatay na tapos ang problem set 3. I think problem set 3 uh, was uh, until um, uh, functions, inverses, and compositions. So that means the problem set number 4 will start on partially ordered set or partially ordered sets. And then uh, dun sa tatlong results that I made a recording of, tapos pianos, action, and then the concept of equipolence, cardinal numbers, countable sets and uh, hopefully the continuum hypothesis. So yung iba sa kanila is supplementary topics na, but probably I'm thinking of uh, doing a freestyle lecture on uh, Friday. Titingnan ko muna yung natitirang material. Kung kaya ko siyang i-compress into uh, one meeting, which is on Friday, I will stick to the study guide. But if not, I will uh, sort of freestyle the lecture on uh, Friday para ma-discuss ma natin yung konsepto ng uh, countable sets, uh, levels of infinity, and then the continuum hypothesis. And I think that's a nice conclusion to Math 101, right? Then after problem set number four, we will have a final assessment, which is equivalent to 19% uh, of your grade. So that's equivalent to one, um, uh, one problem set. Uh, tentatively, the deadline is set for January 10. Pero titingnan ko kung kaya pa natin stretched. Uh, but I think the finals... Uh, the final week is from the 5th to the 11th of January. So I think pinakasagad na tong January 10, unless the registrar will put Math 101 finals on the last day. So yeah, adjust ko siya, pero let's target January 10 para mapagaran yung pag-check namin ng final project. Well, for the final project, I'm still thinking about it. So hopefully by Friday or Monday next week, uh, I will be able to give you the detailed guidelines, so I will upload. Uh, I will upload the file on Canvas para matulungan kayo paano gagawin yung final assessment. And I'll see to it that the final assessment is doable um, in around three days. One to three days should be enough, so you can uh, relax over the week, uh, over the uh, holiday break, and then come back to it uh, first week of January, and then you're still in a good shape to meet the submission deadline on January 10, all right? And then hopefully we'll have a couple day, a couple more days after January 10 to grade a final assessment. So you'll have your final grade right about a week after January 10. So of course, provided uh, na, na submit yun na lahat ng mga previous requirements. By the way, I already graded the problem set uh, 3.1 for those who submitted it via Canvas. You might want to submit via emails who had some problems via, uh, with their uh, Canvas accounts or with their internet connections. As naabutan sila ng closure ng submission beans. Uh, I'll try to finish everything by e yung mga submission by email tonight para makita nyo na kagad yung mga scores nyo. All right? Okay. So now I think we're good to go. Let's uh, go to uh, the week 14 uh, material for today. And this is about the set of natural numbers. Now, this is one tough topic for Math 101 students, not really because of the depth or the uh, the technicality of the subject, but basically, kasi kailangan nating matutunan, dito titingnan natin paano na buo yung set of natural numbers. And when we start going through the uh, the creation, so, so, uh, so to speak, of the natural numbers, 
parang ang weird na no, makikita nating itsura ng no, mga natural numbers. So this is one difficulty in learning. Kasi bago natin matutunan yung set of natural numbers that uh, as they were axiomatically developed, kailangan i-unlearn muna natin yung notions natin ng set of natural numbers pro- from before. Kasi yung parang intuitive notion of natural numbers or the counting numbers, no unang panahon, uh, ang mga tao kasi gatherers and hunters lamang, and they needed to invent numbers in order to keep track of their produce, of their inventory. So bibilangin nila ilan yung mga, ilan yung mga repolyo na harvest nila or ilan yung mga mga cows na meron sila sa kanilang herd. So to keep track of it, they uh, they sort of invented some kind of numbers to uh, to keep them uh, updated with their stock. So one, two, three, four, five. So pwede mong isama si zero if you want. So ganun lamang yung pangangailangan natin para sa set of natural numbers. Pero ambisyoso kasi di ba mga mathematicians, we want everything to be axiomatized. So yun yung titingnan natin ngayon. Ano yung axiomatic foundation ng set of natural numbers. So I will ask you, at least uh, for this class, to forget anything about the natural numbers. Kunwari, hindi, nyo pa, hindi pa kayo marunong bumilang. You don't know what zero is. You don't know what one, two, three, four, five are. So kalimutan nyo muna sila. Let's start from a clean slate. We will try to first um, see a, uh, a uh, good attempt into developing the set of natural numbers in terms of a successor set. Tapos dahil uh, sa modern day, meron tayong tinatawag na axiomatic systems. So titingnan natin paano in yung successor set para maging set of natural numbers governed by a set of five axioms that we call Piano's axiom. All right? Now, it is said that uh, meron ditong quote na Asabe uh, kay Plato, but usually it is uh, attributed to the mathematician Kronecker. Sabi niya, God created the natural numbers and the rest by man. So because usually uh, when you you can study math, uh, which, yeah, you can actually study math beginning from the set of natural numbers. Kaya sabi ni Kronecker, ah, ginawa lang ni God ay natural numbers and then man created the rest. Kasi once you have constructed the set of natural numbers axiomatically, pwede mo nang i-develop ano yung mga integers, ano yung mga rational numbers. Tapos after ng rational numbers, ano yung mga irrational numbers, the real numbers, the complex numbers, and all of them are bootstrapped from the concept of uh, natural numbers. Tapos makikita nyo later, pwede pala natin i-modify itong uh, quote ni Kronecker. Pwede natin sabihin na God created zero and the rest by man, or uh, God created zero and everything followed. So let's see why uh, we can say so, all right? So yun nga, kalimutan yung konsepto muna ng set of natural numbers. We'll start from scratch, Hope uh, assuming wala pang naiimbentong natural numbers. So para hindi kayo malito or hindi kayo ma-weirdan dun sa mga susunod nyong makikita, all right? So basically, uh, intuitively, we know that the set of natural numbers is an, is an example of an infinite set. Though we haven't defined what an infinite set is, yun yung gagawin natin sa Friday, pero you can think of it as uh, hindi ako matatapos kabibilang dun sa mga elements ng set niya. Or I cannot, uh, I cannot write all of the elements exhaustively in a roster method. Hindi ako matatapos pagsusulat ng lahat ng elements ng set na yun. And the existence of infinite sets is guaranteed by Z of 6, or the axiom of infinity, which actually is a little bit sort of part of Piano's axiom. You will see later, kamukhang kamukha siya nung isa sa mga Piano's axiom. Sabi niya, pwedeng mag-exist ang mga elements na napakaraming laman. Um, napakarami enough for us not to be able to finish listing them down. Okay. So, sabi niya, uh, may isang set A na nag exist such that si empty set ay na kay A. So, kung drawing ko si set A or iro-roster method ko si set A, ganito yung magiging itsura niya. So, si empty set daw ay na kay set A. So, now you can think of the set A to be a set of sets or it's a family of sets. So, sets yung laman ni capital A. Si empty set ay na kay A. Tapos, sabi niya, kapag ka daw meron kang element X kay A, 
yung x union yung x union x ay na kay l na kay a din so sa lahat ng element ni a yung x union set containing x is also in a now we already know one member of a it's the empty set so sabi nitong property na to papaltan ko lang si x ng empty set dahil si empty set ay na kay a si empty set union the set containing the empty set is also in A. So, ibig sabihin, magkakaroon ako ng pangalawang laman, the union being the set containing the empty set. So, dalawa na yung laman niya. Alright? Tapos, oops, meron akong bagong na introduce na element dun sa set capital A. Si set containing the empty set. Alright? So, ibig sabihin, yung set itself Union, the set containing the given set, ay dapat na kay capital A din. Tama? So, ito si X. Kasi nga, element siya ni A. So, isipin niya to si X. So, si X union, set containing X. So, si empty set na palitan lang ng X, ay dapat nandun din sa set uh, capital A. And so, I will have this third member of the set. Lagay ko siya dito. Okay? Eh kaya lang, nagdagdag na naman ako ng isang element. And note that this element is different from the previous two elements. So by again, this assumption, alright, ito ay mga nganak ng panibagong element dun sa set capital A. So siya ay dapat i-union ko. Okay, so ito yung current set na meron tayo. I-union ko siya sa set containing yung sarili niya. Set containing the empty set. Union, the set containing, the set containing, the empty set. All right? And whatever this union is, that's going to be the uh, the fourth member of our set. All right? So, siguro, pwede ko pala tong isimplify, no? Uh, pag kinuha ko yung union nila, makukuha ko ay eto. Yeah. Para mas maiksi yung nasa notation natin. All right? And then the third one would be the empty set. Uh, mm -hmm. then the set containing the empty set and then the set containing the set containing the empty set and the set containing the empty set. Okay, kulang ba ako ng braces? Tingnan isa, dalawa, and then, yeah, kulang ko ng isang brace. And then, tama na. Tapos, may kama pa rito. So, kung mapapansin nyo, nangyayari ay, bawat isang element nagko-contribute o nanganganak ng isa pang panibagong member dun sa set capital A. And that's why we can say na hindi ako matatapos pagsusulat ng set capital A. Kasi once nagdagdag ako ng isang miyembro, by this, uh, by this uh, conclusion, Dapat magdagdag pa ako ng isang panibagong member, which in turn will give us another distinct member of capital A. So, yun yung idea ng axiom of infinity. And basically, uh, and the axiom of infinity actually could be used as the basis for the construction of the set of natural numbers, as we will see in the following slides. So, copy ko lang to before I shift to... Uh, nalagyan ko muna siya ng end brace dito para sa set. And then I'll copy it for later. Okay. All right. And then for this, uh, for the construction of the set of natural numbers, we will, we will need the concept of the successor. The successor is a unary operation, meaning bibigyan kita ng isang element, bibigyan kita ng isang set. So kaya mong compute din ano yung successor ng set na yon. And what is the successor of a given set? If you have a set, and successor niya ay si X plus, or si X successor, okay? Si X successor ay yung set obtained by taking the union of the set X and the set containing itself, all right? So, ito yung successor ni X. Kung paano kinocompute yung successor ni X. Kaya, dun sa paggamit natin ng axiom of infinity, ito yung Ito yung element na pinanganak ni X. Ito yung panibagong element ni capital A na nanggaling dun sa element X na inintroduce natin dun sa set. Okay? For instance, the, the successor of the empty set is the set containing the empty set. 
the successor of the set containing empty set is the set containing the empty set union, the set containing the set containing the empty set. All right. So yun yung definition ng successor. And then we say that a set A, pag meron kang collection ng mga sets, all right? Pag meron kang collection ng mga sets, say capital A yung pangalan niya, tapos si empty set ay na kay capital A, tapos kapag ka si X ay element ni capital A, yung successor niya ay dapat element din ni capital A, then we say A is an example of a successor set. All right? So parang siya yung ginawa natin kanina doon sa dun sa axiom of infinity yung nabuo nating set A dahil na satisfy niya yung empty set is an element of capital A and whenever you have a set that is in capital A then its successor which looks like this exactly uh, as written in the axiom of choice magiging element din siya ni capital A kaya yung set na to okay ay pwede nating sabihin na isang successor set. Kasi ito si empty set, ito yung successor ni empty set, ito yung successor ng successor ni empty set, tapos ito yung successor ng successor ng successor ni empty set. And the process will continue as uh, denoted by this uh, ellipsis over here. Okay? So ito isang example ng, um, ng successor set. And actually, Z of 6 can just uh, be re uh, rephrased to say that there exists a successor set, right? Kasi ginagaranti niya na merong set A na nagpo-possess ng mga properties ng successor set. So we are sure that there is at least one successor set and actually an example of which is this one that we have just written, okay? Tapos, it can be shown using um, one of the previous three results, I think, uh, either the well-ordering principle, the Zorn's lemma, or the axiom of choice, that there exists a minimal successor set. Remember when we say a set is minimal in a post set, all right? Ibig sabihin kung drawing mo yung post set diagram nung, uh, nung relation mo, minimal yung isang element pag wala ka nang makikitang element nung partial order na nandun sa ilalim niya. Parang siya na yung, hindi ka na pwedeng bumaba mula sa kanya. So, remark number two, is telling us na merong isang unique minimal successor set with respect to set inclusion. Pag dinrawing ko yung post set diagram ng mga successor sets under the, the partial order set inclusion. So limbawa, meron ako dito ba, capital omega, tapos uh, siya yung parang pinaka-universal set, tapos maglalagay ako dyan ng mga, ng mga successor sets, say, uh, successor set 1, Successor set 2, successor set 3. Alimbawa, ito drawing ko yung post set diagram. Eventually, all of them will converge to a set little omega. And little omega is the unique minimal successor set. Kasi wala na siyang pinipreseed na ibang successor set. All right? So in the class of all successor sets, siya na yung pinakamaliit. Kasi subset siya ng lahat ng mga successor sets at walang successor set ang superset C si omega except for itself. So, siya yung nasa pinaka-ilalim nung drawing nung post-set diagram. Okay? And since, uh, hindi natin ipoprove na may unique, pero believe me that there exists a unique uh, successor set. All right? And actually, that unique successor set omega is the one that we have created over here. So, instead na A, tawagin ko na siyang omega. Ito na yung pinakamaliit na posibleng successor set na ma-define natin. Kasi nga, in-avoid natin yung pag-create ng or pagdadagdag ng iba pang mga elements. Kasi remember, ang tanging requirement ng pagiging successor set, si empty set ay nandun. Tapos, sinimula natin kay empty set, kinuha natin yung successor niya. Tapos, kinuha ko yung successor ng successor. Tapos, successor ng successor ng successor. So, hindi ako nagdadagdag ng mga unnecessary members ng set. Pero halimbawa, pwede ka rin mag-define ng isang mas malaking successor set. Halimbawa, di ba si empty set ako nagsimula, pwede ako magdagdag ng isa pa. Halimbawa, idagdag ko si, uh, halimbawa, si set containing apple. Right? So dito ako sa dalawang elements magsimula, tapos computing ko yung mga successors nila. And that will in turn 
give me a larger successor set, larger in the sense that that new successor set that started with the empty set and the set containing Apple is a successor set that is a superset of Omega, all right? So, pero in the, in the way we constructed this omega, this actually will be the minimal successor set. We didn't include any other element other than those that are needed. Okay, shame pinakamaliet. And omega is what we call the set of natural numbers. So, pwede na rin natin tawagin si omega to be our set of natural numbers. And this is what I'm saying earlier na it looks kind of weird na ganito yung pagkakadefine ng set of natural numbers. Yung natutunan natin na counting numbers pala from elementary, hindi pala talaga sa 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Sila ay si empty set, set containing the empty set, set containing empty set, and the set containing empty set, and then the set containing the empty set, the set containing empty set, the set containing the empty set, and the set containing empty set, and so on. So ito pala yung set of natural numbers. So briefly, if we want to axiomatically, or this is the uh, first attempt in axiomatizing the set of natural numbers, uh, the set of natural numbers is the minimal successor set. It's the unique minimal successor set. Tapos tingnan nyo yung kagandahan ng pagkakadevelop ng set of natural numbers dito. Kasi we used or we only used concepts that were previously defined. Remember, in all of our discussion about axioms, about sets, and so on, walang concept ng numbers. Never natin define ano yung number one. Ano nga ba yung ibig sabihin ng number one? It's just an abstract object na number one. Meron tayong bias, meron tayong predisposition about what the number one is. But we haven't defined them technically all throughout the course. Kaya if I want to keep my, my discussion axiomatic, hindi ko pwedeng gamitin si 1 pag kinonstruct ko yung set of natural numbers kasi hindi ko pa siya na-define before. Though ginagamit natin sila sa mga proofs, nag-prove tayo about even integers or natural or even natural numbers and so on, pero ano nga ba ang konsepto ng numero? Yun ang hindi pa natin na-define. Now, this is, a, this is the first step into doing that. The set of natural numbers is the minimal successor set. Ano yung itsura ng minimal successor set? Ito siya. Now, there's a big problem at looking at omega or n, the set of natural numbers, this way. Napaka-tedious at saka parang unfamiliar, napaka-foreign or alien nitong set of natural numbers na ito. So, to, uh, to make it easier and look more familiar, I will now define the usual natural numbers that we see. Okay? Or that we, that we had been using since... Uh, since the day we learned how to count, all right? Okay, I will just randomly assign zero for the empty set. Problema kasi dun kay Omega, napakaraming braces, and daling malos dun sa pagsusulat ng braces. So pwede kong isulat si empty set, i-assign ko siya dun sa symbol na zero, which for now means nothing except that it is the representative for the empty set. Tapos, si set containing the empty set, isusulat ko na lang siya as 1 para mas madali. Again, the notion, the number 1 uh, here is seemingly arbitrary. Uh, arbitrary. Hindi na, walang, walang ibang ibig sabihin. Parang trip ko lang na tawag yun si set the empty set, uh, the set containing the empty set, and assign it to the value 1. Okay? Meaning, si 0 successor ay equal kay 1. Kasi si Zero successor ay successor ni empty set. Tapos si empty set successor ay the empty set union, the set containing the empty set, which is the set containing empty set, which we decided to call the number one. So ito yung proof na zero successor ay equal kay one. And then, I will call the set containing the empty set and the set containing the empty set to be the element 2, right? Na successor siya ni 1, so si 2 successor ng successor ni 0, and so on. So this will be assigned to 3, and so on. There's no biggie on my choice or my decision to call uh, the set, uh, the empty set 0, the set containing the empty set 1, and so on. 
random assignments lang sila. But you will see that this assignment seems to be natural because it seems that this gives us how many elements ang laman ni omega. Like the empty set. Ilan ang laman ni empty set? Zero. Nada. Okay? Ilan ang laman ng set containing the empty set? May isa siyang laman. Tawagin ko siyang one. The set containing the set contain ah uh, the set containing the empty set and the set containing the empty set meron siyang dalawang laman si empty set at saka si set containing the empty set. Yung pangatlong member ay uh, yung pangapat na member isa, dalawa, tatlo, tatlo. Tatlo yung laman niya kaya inassign ko siya k3. Now we see that uh, the number 0, 1, 2 and 3 actually pala ay ginamit para i-represent yung elements ni omega and not just that the correspondence was chosen so that this numbers here will stand for how many elements are there in omega kaya ang tawag sa kanya ay set of counting numbers or an alternative way to the uh, an alternative name to the set of natural numbers would be the set of counting numbers kasi ni-represent nila yung element ng minimal successor set na ganun karami yung laman the number 3 represents the element of omega, the minimal successor set that has 3 members. Kaya siya counting numbers. Uh, technically, hindi siya counting numbers kasi siya yung ginagamit nating pambilang. Counting numbers sila kasi sila yung representative nung, uh, nung element nung minimal successor set na ganun karami yung laman. So, kaya counting numbers yung tawag sa kanya. Kaya, um, Sige, later ko na sasabihin kung siya ay cardinal or ordinal when we go to uh, Friday's lecture. But that's how we so construct the set of natural numbers. So, um, siguro as a matter of convention na lang, we will write omega kapag ka ito yung uh, representation na gagawin natin sa minimal successor set o sa set of natural numbers. Tapos capital uh, double struck N kapag ka ganito natin siya isusulat. And basically, this is the axiomatic attempt in the development of the set of natural numbers. Okay? So, do you guys have any questions so far? Medyo weird, no? <laughs> All right. So, if there are no questions, let's uh, proceed next. Now, napaka naive no construction. Napaka, uh, I mean, napaka-process naka, napaka laden or napaka-process based na itong way ng pagkoconstruct natin ng set of natural numbers. All right? Now, in 1889, there's this mathematician who tried to uh, formulate or to axiomatize the set of uh, natural numbers or the construction of the set of natural numbers. Siya si Giuseppe uh, Piano. So, siya yung, nag, uh, siya yung unang nag-try ng... Uh, na mag-lay down ng axioms. Ano yung mga rules governing the set of natural numbers? Alam natin siyang i-construct. Pero ano yung, uh, ano yung magiging basis? O ano yung mga self-evident truths that will lead us to the development of uh, the set of uh, natural numbers? Doon na-construct na natin siya. Right? Paano natin mape-prevent yung pagkakaroon ng mga paradoxes? So kailangan piliin natin yung mga axioms governing the set of natural numbers in a nice way para walang magkaroon na internal contradictions because gusto natin ang axiomatic system natin ay maging consistent. All right? And actually, it was Dedekind who, uh, who formulated or who finalized Piano's axioms using the concept of the successor set. So usually, uh, or it is rightfully called, uh, Piano's axioms are rightfully called the Dedekind uh, Piano's axioms. Pero ang nag-stick sa literature or in popular culture ay pianos, axioms na lamang. All right? Now, these are five self-evident truths that are often assumed uh, as properties of the set of natural numbers. And only the set of natural numbers will satisfy all of these uh, properties. Okay? Tapos kaya sabi ni, uh, sabi ni, uh, uh, ni Kroniker, uh, God created the natural numbers kasi nga sila yung galing sa mga axioms. Nang galing sila sa mga self-evident truths in nature, namely this five axioms over here. Tapos wala tayong axioms para sa integers. Wala tayong axioms para sa real numbers. Kasi sila ay nakadefine depende sa mga natural numbers. 
Kasi di ba, pag meron ka ng set of natural numbers, ang daling i-define ng integers. Siya lang ay set of all natural numbers together with their additive inverses, yung mga negative natural numbers. Tapos, makukuha mo yung integers. Para makuha yung rationals, kukunin mo lang yung ratio ng dalawang integers. So we don't need any any separate set of axioms for this uh, for this number sets kasi nga they are solidly founded on the set of natural numbers tapos wala nang mas basic pa sa natural numbers kasi ang susunod na sa natural numbers ay yung Peano's axioms. Kaya sabi, uh, man-made na lahat after the set of natural numbers. Kaya siguro natural numbers yung tawag sa, kan sa kanila kasi they are born out of natural intuition or self-evident truths for which all other number sets came from. Okay. Now, ano yung statements ng Piano's axioms? So una, kailangan natin ng isang unary operation plus, which we call the, uh, the uh, successor relation. Okay. So pag meron kang isang set, pwede natin makompute yung kanyang successor to be the set union, the set containing itself, as we have seen in definition 5.1.2. Unary siya kasi hindi siya katulad ng addition na kailangan ng dalawang operands o dalawang sets para, or ng dalawang objects para ma-carry out yung operation. So, no, addition, kailangan mo ng dalawang numbers na ipang-add. So, uh, union, kailangan mo ng dalawang sets na ipag-union sa isa't isa. Yun yung tinatawag natin na binary operations. Now, the successor relation or the successor operation is unary kasi isa lang yung kailangan natin para ma-carry out yung operation. Isa lang yung input. Tapos makakakuha tayo ng isang output. Now, what about the successor set or the successor relation or the successor operation? Ito yung limang self-evident truths about the set of natural numbers omega which is defined using the successor relation in omega. Piano's axiom number one, zero is an element of omega. So, siya yung unang element ni natural numbers. <coughs> Sorry. Ito yung dahilan kung bakit gusto kong i-rephrase yung statement ni Kroniker na God created, instead of the natural numbers, God created zero kasi siya yung nanggaling dito sa P1. All right? Parang out of nowhere, nagkaroon ng zero. Poop. Let there be zero, and there you go. Nangkaroon na ng zero. And thanks to Piano's axioms, magkakaroon tayo or manganganak si zero ng mga elements na magbibigay sa atin ng set of natural numbers as a whole. Okay? So that's the first axiom. Existence of zero is guaranteed by P1. Next axiom. And this is what we have seen from the axiom of infinity. If n is in omega, then its successor must also be in omega. All right? So kapag ka meron kang isang element ni omega, ibig sabihin yung successor niya ay nakay omega red. So ibig sabihin, dahil si zero ay nakay omega, si zero successor, which is the, uh, which is actually the successor of, uh, actually, this will be zero, union the set containing zero, this is the set containing zero, and we said tatawagin ko tong one. So one is our is the next member of omega. And then dahil C1 a member ni omega, C1 plus dapat or C1 successor ay dapat element din ni omega. Compute natin C1 successor. C1 successor ay one union the set containing one. Ito ay magiging um, set containing one and the set containing one, and then I will randomly assign it to the number two. And the reason for that, para magamit ko yung notion na natin ng number two, dalawa yung laman ni one successor. So kaya siya yung magiging pangalawang element dito. You can uh, continue the process uh, recursively. Makukuha mo na lahat ng mga natural numbers. Okay? So basically, this is just the uh, axiom of infinity replacing the empty set in the statement by the element zero. Okay? So, parang yung P1 at saka P2, sila ay yung axiom of infinity lamang. Pero gusto nating mag-guarantee na wala nang ibang malalagay kay omega 
other than the other natural numbers that we know. We want omega to be the minimal successor set. Dapat siya yung pinakamaliit na successor set. So wala dapat ditong ibang elements aside from the natural numbers that should be written. So paano natin i-avoid na magkaroon pa siya ng ibang laman except for the natural numbers that we know? Well, we will introduce some more axioms. Kasi kulang. Kung ito lamang, pwede pa lang nandito rin si negative 1. Pwede nandito rin si negative 2. Si negative 3. I-define ko lang sila to be the successor of some other elements of the set. Pwede ako mag-isip ng paano ko mapapanganak si negative 1. Mag-isip lang ako or isiset ko si negative 1 successor to be equal to 0. So malalagay na dito si negative 1. Alright? Kaya lang, para ma-avoid yun, Para ma-avoid na madagdagan pa siya ng ibang mga elements, ilalagay ko si P3. P3 just says na walang natural number na ang successor ay zero. Okay? There's no such real, uh, there is no such natural number whose successor is equal to zero, thereby guaranteeing that zero will be the least element of the set omega. All right? So kaya hindi mapapasama yung mga negative numbers kasi nga bawal si zero maging successor ng kahit na ano pang natural number. Okay? Tapos oh, sige, so bawal ako mag zero. So paano kung naman ma-avoid na madagdag si one half, si one fourth, and so on mula dito sa, mula dito sa set omega. Now, it is partly solved by the fourth axiom. It says that the successor of a set is unique. Kapag ka meron tayong natural numbers M and N who share the same successor, then those two numbers are equal to each other. So ibig sabihin, halimbawa, meron akong dalawang numbers na halimbawa si one half successor ay halimbawa kunwari equal kay 2. Tapos si one successor alam natin ay equal kay 2 by definition. Ibig sabihin daw dapat yung mga nasa loob ni successor o yung mga predecessors ay equal sa isa't isa. So that means one half must be the same as one. So ibig sabihin, wala nang pwedeng makasingit sa mga ito. Kasi ang posibleng makasingit sa kanila ay yung predecessor ni two. Pero ang sabi ni P4, nag-iisa lamang yung predecessor ni uh, ni two. Right? Kasi kapag ka meron pang isang number, say little m, na ang successor ay si two, Dapat siya ay equal kay 1. Because I know that the successor of 1 is equal to 2. So therefore, walang makakasingit dyan. Wala nang iba pang element before, right before 2 aside from 1. Wala siyang nasa same level. Okay? Alright. And then to cap it off, we'll have action number 5. Do you guys... Rem uh, do you guys... Uh, Recognize P5. It is uh, actually one thing that we have already encountered before. <coughs> Ginagarantin niya talaga yung minimality ng, ng omega. Or yung uniqueness ng omega as the minimal element of the post set of all successor sets with respect to the uh, the inclusion relation. Okay. Tatandaan nyo ba siya or it doesn't look familiar? Actually, let's see. P5. P5 says, if a subset B of omega is a successor set, then B is equal to omega. Um, this answers yung, or this uh, formalizes yung sabi natin kanina na si omega yung unique minimal successor set. Kasi kung meron pa tayong makikitang subset ni omega na isa ring successor set, Dapat si B ay equal kay omega para mag talaga natin na si omega siya yung minimal successor set at siya yung unique uh, minimal successor set. Now, what does it mean? Now, if we can find a subset B of omega, all right, such that 0 is in B and uh, whenever M is in B, its successor is in B. So parang ito lang, in-spell out natin ano yung ibig sabihin ng pagiging successor set ni B. Pag si 0 ay nakay B, tapos kapag ka si M ay nakay B, then the successor of M must also in B. That's precisely the definition of, uh, of uh, a successor set. Then necessarily, B is equal to the set of natural numbers omega. Right? 
Now, bakit nangyayari yun? Uh, well, hindi pala bakit nangyayari yun. Sa so, natin to nakita before. Actually, this is the principle of mathematical induction or PMI. Okay? So, pwede nyong isipin dito si B ay set of all uh, set of all numbers satisfying property P. Remember, ang, uh, ang PMI natin, ginagamit natin pang prove ng statements about the set of natural numbers. Now, si set B, kunwari, siya yung set ng lahat ng natural numbers na nagsasatisfy ng property P na gusto nating i-prove. Then, usually, ang gusto nating sabihin, si B ay equal kay omega. Ibig sabihin, yung set of natural numbers contains all those numbers that satisfies the or that satisfy the property P. Okay? Now, paano siya nag work Zero must be an element of B. That means zero must satisfy property P. So, ito yung ginagawa nating basis step before. Pinapakita natin na totoo yung statement P sa pinakamaliit na natural number for what the statement is claimed. So, the, here we just randomly assume that uh, the, the statement is, uh, as, is uh, claimed for zero. Tapos, Induction hypothesis natin na si M ay element ni B. HOI. Inassume natin na kunwari, totoo yung property P sa isang natural number M. Tapos, dun sa induction step, gusto nating ipakita na si M plus 1, which is the successor of M, is an element of B. Or the property applies also to the successor of uh, M, which is exactly m plus 1. So yun yung ano, yung p about m implies p about m plus 1. We'll see later that m plus 1 actually is the successor of m. So yung p5, siya yung tinatawag nating principle of mathematical induction, which we used to prove statements before you involving the set of natural numbers. Kaya nag apply siya sa set of natural numbers kasi nga isa siya dun sa mga axioms na ginagamit dun sa axiomatic development ng set of natural numbers. Okay? So these are the um, So if you're a math major or an MST math major, uh, makikita nyo siya ulit. Siya yung magiging start ng uh, Math 103, which is Elementary Theory of Numbers. Kasi nga, Theory of Numbers, where else will you start other than the set of natural numbers? Okay? So dito sa Math 101, medyo dadaanan lang natin itong konsepto na to para ma-justify yung countability equivalence kay N na gagawin natin on Friday. Okay? So any questions about pianos? Sorry kung medyo paputol-putol yung internet ko. Nakikita ko yung Wi-Fi uh, indicator ko. Palipat-lipat siya sa connection sa active connection saka connection lost so yeah hopefully hindi ganun kasama I apologize if it is okay now let's uh, spend the next uh, few minutes talking about arithmetic on the set of natural numbers we'll try to uh, define addition and multiplication here there you go I hope I'm back. We'll not prove the property, so i, uh, i uh, state lang natin siya. Tapos tingnan natin yung uh, siguro paano dinefine yung addition at saka multiplication natural numbers. Uh, yung properties nito na alala ko nung undergrad ako, uh, pinroob namin sa Math 155, sa Real Analysis. Though ngayon, nung nagtuturo ako ng 155, hindi ko na dinis-discuss yung set of natural numbers. So I think you will incur, uh, you numbers. Okay. So, we will be uh we will be content with just stating this uh this facts, right? Now, uh una, paano natin din define yung addition, all right? Theorem 5.2.1 suggests that there is one operation. There exists a unique binary operation on the set of natural numbers. Ibig sabihin uh, merong isang function na ang domain ay n cross n. So, kumukuha siya ng dalawang natural numbers. 
Tapos ina-assign ni function alpha yung pair ng natural numbers na yun into another natural number. And if alpha satisfies these two properties, then alpha is what we call addition. Ito yung usual addition na alam na natin. All right? So ano yung dalawang properties that only addition possess? Uh, ito lang yung, ito yung dalawang properties na si addition lamang yung nakakasatisfy among the class of all uh, binary operations on n cross n. Una, alpha of 0, comma n ay equal kay n. So parang pag si 0, pinair ko kay n, ang sagot pa rin under alpha or ang image under alpha ay si n pa rin. Siguro it would be more familiar if we will write, uh, we will now adopt the notation addition or plus. Yung alpha of 0 n, sulat na lang natin siya 0 plus n. Property number 1 says 0 plus n is equal to n. Okay, and then second, uh, the property alam natin ng addition, at si addition lamang daw ang nakakasatisfy, sabi ni Theorem uh, 5.2.1, ang alpha ng successor ni m, at saka kama n ay successor ng alpha ni m kama n. So in the usual parlance of addition, ito ay m successor plus n ay equals sa uh, m plus n successor. Now, kapag ka meron kang operation addition, okay? not necessarily the usual addition that we know. Pag merong binary operation that satisfies this two property, or these two properties, ibig sabihin yung operation na yun dapat ay yung usual addition na alam natin. Because only addition can satisfy these two properties. Alright? Now, with this notion, tingnan natin kung paano ba naging one successor, si, uh, naging zero successor, si one, si one successor naging two, and so on, using these two properties. Ano yung magandang way on how to de how to write the successor relation in terms of addition. Para mas familiar tayo. Kasi di ba dati, um, ang alam lang natin sa successor relation ay ang successor ng isang set ay yung sarili niya, union, the set containing itself. But since we have adapted uh, a symbol for the elements of omega or the elements of capital N, paano kaya natin madidefine yung successor ng isang natural number using uh, an operation that we know from our elementary days. So, limbawa, kukomputing ko si uh, kukomputing ko si n successor. Oops. Okay. Now, para makompute ko si n successor, pwede ko itong isulat as zero. Uh, pwede ko itong isulat as uh, huh? mm-hmm. Pwede ko tong isulat as 0 plus n successor. Teka, balik tayo yata. Anong mas magandang paraan? Uh, huh. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Kakailanin ko yung commutativity kasi pag ganito ko siya gagawin. So, ah, ganito na lang. Ipuprove ko na lang. na si n successor ay equal kay n plus 1. Alright? Kasi dun sa discussion ko ng PMI, nadulas ako, nasabi ko na si m successor ay equal kay n plus 1. Pero hindi pa natin na-define kung ano yung addition. Now, sa theorem 5.2.1, alam natin na merong operation alpha that satisfies these two properties. And actually, that exists operation, uh, that unique operation is addition. So, siya yung usual notion natin ng addition. Now, ipuprove ko yung, yung statement na nadulas ako kanina. Na sinabi ko na si, N, uh, na si M successor ay equal kay M plus 1. Para maging kamukha ang kamukha ng P5, yung PMI natin. Now, how will I prove this? Well, I will start with... Uh, actually, dapat siguro... Tapos siguro 1 plus n. Ina-avoid ko kasing gamitin yung commutativity kasi at this point, hindi pa na-prove yung commutativity so hindi ko pa siya pwedeng gamitin. So hopefully, gumana sana eto dito. 
n plus 1. Okay, so I think this is this should be fine. All right, proof. Again, I hope uh, you you uh, you appre you uh, you recognize my quandary here. Ano yung problema ko kung bakit hindi ko siya pwedeng isulat na n plus 1? Kasi hindi pa natin na prove na commutativity yung uh, na commutative yung addition. Though alam na natin siya from elementary, pero axiomatic yung development ngayon, meta axiom of ignorance will come in. I cannot use any result that were not previously proven nor assumed. All right? So, pu-prove ko tong equation na to, mag-start ako sa isang side niya. Mag-start ako kay 1 plus n kasi papakita ko equal 'yon kay n successor, okay? 1 plus n, start ako diyan. I'll use logical uh, arguments to show that this is equal to n uh, successor, okay? Now, I can uh, we know that zero successor is equal to 1, all right? By definition. So, I can write 1 as zero successor instead. Kasi kanina, alam natin sa construction, ang zero successor, sinulat natin to be the symbol 1. Okay? And then by the second property, pag meron akong successor plus another natural number, equal yun dun sa successor nung sum ng dalawang numbers. So ibig sabihin, zero successor plus n can be written as zero plus n successor. Okay? So by theorem 5.2.1 section 2. All right? Tapos gagamitin ko yung section 1 ng theorem 5.2.1. 0 plus n. 0 plus n is equal to n. So the inside of the successor will just be n. Tapos kokopyin ko yung successor sa taas. End of proof. All right? So that shows that 1 plus n is an alternative way or is a better way to write n successor in terms of the operation addition. Okay? Uh, so this is a, an elementary uh, illustration of how addition works. So you can use these two, uh, uh, two results or two axioms for addition. Kasi mga properties sila na alam na natin na nasasatisfy ni addition para ma-prove yung associativity, commutativity, cancellation loss, uh, this is uh, what? Uh, kapag ka si M ay less than or equal kay N, then there is there exists an, another natural number P, such that kailangan kong idagdag si P kay M para makadating kay N. Tapos property 5 is the addition property of inequality. And then this is the zero property of addition. When you add two natural numbers, then that means those two natural numbers are both equal to zero. Okay? And then, uh, yeah, theorem 5.2.3 does the same for uh, the multiplication. So, sinasabi ng theorem na to, pag merong kang operation, merong nag-iisang operation mu or function mu from n cross n to n satisfying two properties. Ano yun? A mu ni 0, n ay equal kay 0. Tapos ang mu ng m successor at ni n ay equal sa mu ni m n plus n. Now, pag meron kang, pro, meron kang operation na nakakasatisfy ng dalawang properties na yan, then that operation is exactly the multiplication of natural numbers that we know. Because no other operation will satisfy these two properties, okay? So kaya pwede natin isulat or tawagin siya by a symbol dot, by the dot symbol. Zero times n is equal to zero for all n. And then yung pangalawa naman, m successor times n ay equals uh, m n plus n. So paano siya na justify? Parang distributive property yan ng addition. So actually you can use this uh, this uh, this property para ma-prove yung distributive property ng multiplication over addition. Kasi nga yung m, uh, yung m successor, pwede nating isulat as 1 plus m or m plus 1. Kasi na-prove na natin ang m successor ay equal kay 1 plus m, tapos commutative yung addition by the previous theorems, all right? Tapos ita times natin to kay n. Tapos parang distributive property siya. So ito yung distributive property in disguise. Magiging m times n. 
plus 1 times n, that's going to be n. So para madaling tandaan in second property. And using these two properties that we know that multiplication does satisfy and only multiplication can satisfy, we can prove the following theorems. Associativity, commutativity, the cancellation law for multiplication, the distributivity of multiplication over ad addition. Then this is the multiplication property of inequality. And the last one is the zero property of multiplication. That when you multiply two natural numbers, then either the first or the second factor must be equal to zero. Okay? Kasi ito yung patikim sa axiomatic development ng natural numbers. Although magandang introduction na siya kasi kinonstruct talaga natin yung set of natural numbers, what is missing from here is uh, or would be the, uh, the uh, rigorous proof of the different properties of operations on the set of natural numbers and the other properties like divisibility and other stuff, which you will learn in Math 103. But for Math 101, I think we have all that we need for the set of natural numbers in preparation for our discussion of cardinal and uh, ordinal numbers and levels of infinity on Friday. So sorry, overtime na naman ako, 6.30 na naman tayo matatapos, but I hope you got something from today. Uh, do you guys have any questions before we call it a day or a night? Uh, yes, uh, Bea. Sir, I'll ask ko lang po sana, sir, if ever po na, halimbawa po, existing na po yung, di ba po may tsuro po, tapos proven na po siya. Kapag uh -huh. po pa, um, sa props at may tanong po patungkol doon, pwede po pa um, ilagay na lang po namin pa yung tsuro ng ganyan, tapos ayun na po yung sagot. Parang hindi na po namin ipoprove yung mismong tsuro. Yep, uh, pwede yan, Bea. So, yeah, actually, yun yung madaling paraan. Kung proven na siya sa klase, ibig sabihin, uh, hindi ko lang na-review yung, yung, ano, yung work text tapos nalagay ko pa siya sa tanong. Pero, uh, pwede, i-quote nyo na lang siya na nanggaling dun sa work text, alright? Or pwede nyo sabihin kung, kung tanda nyo na na-prove siya sa klase or nabanggit siya sa work text, hindi nyo tanda yung number, pwede nyo lang sabihin na by a theorem proven in class, then the following hold. At uh, hindi lang siya about uh, the actual statement, pero if you will need to use that theorem para sa proof nyo sa, dun sa question, halimbawa, merong isang step dun sa proof nyo na kailangan yung theorem na na-prove naman sa klase, hindi nyo na kailangan i-work out yung detalye ng proof nung statement na gagamitin nyo. Pwedeng sabihin nyo na lang, okay, uh, um, I want to show this, but by the theorem proven in class or that was in the work text, this follows. So, hindi ko na hanapin yung proof nung sa, uh, yung detalye dun sa pagitan. Basta sinabi nyo, may keynote kayo na, na theorem mula dun sa work text. And that's perfectly fine. And that's what I expect you to do. All right? Sige po, sir. Thank you po. All right. So, sana walang ganun kasi ibig sabihin pag may ganun sa problem set, Ibig sabihin, nakalimutan kong i-review yung, uh, yung work text. Tapos nandun na pala yung proof. So either you copy the entire proof or you just say, na-prove na po ito sa klase. So hindi ko na po kailangan i-prove. So sana hindi ganun yung mangyari sa susunod na problem set. I hope, uh, yeah, hindi ko ma-miss up. But uh, other questions? All right, so if there are none, then uh, thank you guys for coming today. Kakaiba kakaunti yung umaten today. But I hope to see more of you on Friday kasi last meeting na natin on Friday and I'm going to talk about uh, levels of infinity. I have a nice TED Ed video uh, that I can play uh, before the class or before the class starts. Uh, actually, kahit dur uh, during the start of the class, kaya lang baka ma-strike ako sa YouTube pag kinam sinama ko siya sa upload. So i-edit ko pa yung video. I hope uh, I am trying to avoid that. Pero yeah, let's see what will happen on uh, Friday. All right? So thank you guys. Uh, good night and enjoy your dinner. Let's see each other again on Friday. Bye. Thank you, Pusa.